You'd be forgiven if at first glance you thought this was a scar or perhaps an XCR. After all, with that monolithic upper, polymer lower and folding stock, this gun looks decidedly modern. As it should be, as this rifle was released a mere decade ago in 2009, which in gun years makes this practically a toddler. This is ASG's take on the CZ805 Bren, an older release, but this is the upgraded version with the integrated MOSFET unit. This is also the North American version, which you'll be glad to know accepts most AR magazines, but it does have that dreaded orange tip. We've replaced this one, well, because we can. It also has that all important quick change spring system, which I'll show you how to do in a little bit. On paper, it sounds like a great option if you already have an AR loadout and you're looking for something a little bit different. Let's take a look. We begin with the externals. There are two different lengths available, the full size A1 and the shorter length A2. The uppers are machined from a solid block of metal, so it does have a little bit of weight to it, coming in at 3.07 kilograms and 2.98 kilograms for the A1 and the A2 respectively, with a standard full metal M4A1 coming in at 2.59 kilograms. Both variants are available in tan or black. The tan is on the darker side, but it does have a great look to it. But in my opinion, the black one is gorgeous. It's definitely more of a gray than a black, but it offers a nice two-tone look, contrasting against that black furniture. These are officially licensed, so you get nice engraved trademarks. I wasn't that big a fan of the giant warning label, but it's actually faithful to the real CZ. Looking at the packaging, it's nothing to write home about, but inside it does have water jet cut foam, which you know I always love to see. Not much in the way of accessories, you get a manual and a high cap magazine, period. The manual is a glossy 12 page affair with photos of the actual gun and teaches you the basics like how to swap springs, adjust cheek riser and field strip the barrel. Only complaint is lack of exploded parts diagram. Compared to a standard length M4, the A1 is 9cm longer and the A2 is right about the same length. Of course, with stocks folded, even the longer A1 is shorter than the M4. Compared to a standard length M4 inner barrel at 363mm, the A1 comes in at 375 and the A2 comes in at 310 the biggest variance in size is the stock. The shortest setting on the brand is equivalent to the second last setting on a standard buffer tube. This is important to consider if you usually set your M4 to the first or second stock setting. The stock folds over like a G36 stock and is held in place by a spring-loaded internal tab. You can use the rifle with stock folded in unless the stock is in the first setting covering that trigger. You can always remove the stock entirely, just push this button and slide it off completely. Overall fitment isn't perfect, but it's about the same as a standard buffer tube. Moving forward, it has the usual assortment of Picatinny rail. It's worth noting, however, that the milling is super sharp and you can definitely cut yourself on this rail, so I would really run some rail covers. Up top, we have polymer flip up iron sights with two apertures and standard adjustability. What I really like is the ambidextrous button you can activate from either side. The irons pop up with authority and have a very nice build to them. Definitely one of my favorite stock iron sights on the market. There are metal sling points at the front and back on either side, but the hole is quite small so you might have to loop in some paracord. At the end of the barrel, as mentioned before, there is that orange tip that's pinned into place. But if you can remove it, there is a standard 14 millimeter counterclockwise thread and also a locking collar to hold your attachment in place. The selector lever is ambidextrous and notches nicely into place with a strong detent. The magazine release is also ambidextrous with a lever action on the left side. It's moved forward compared to an AR, so it's a little bit of a stretch to reach. The charging handle sticks out pretty far from the gun and you can move it to either side or just remove it entirely. Pulling back reveals the rotary hop up but there's no way to lock it. The bolt hold button is purely cosmetic. Overall build quality is definitely on par with higher end AEGs with really really nice controls and no wobble at all in the body whatsoever other than the stock that I mentioned before. Overall ergonomics, shouldering the rifle feels natural and familiar as I'm sure it was designed to be. I really like that pistol grip and that selector lever, but the biggest downer is definitely that mag release that's moved a bit forward. 
The battery sits on top of the mech box. To access the battery, simply remove the rear pin and slide the entire rear assembly downwards. It's a narrow space, but it's deep and can hold a 9.6 volt nickel, no problem. It can fit a stick 7.4 volt LiPo like this one perfectly, but this 11.1 is just a little too wide. Try finding an 11.1 with a narrower profile like this Firefox LiPo. With the rear assembly removed, you can access the quick change spring. Remove the cover with a flathead screwdriver. Push in the spring guide, turn until the tabs align and the spring pops right out. Replace with the spring of your choice, looser coils forward. Let's talk magazines. The included polymer high cap holds 360 rounds with a winder at the bottom. Most guys will probably want to run mid caps, so let's take a look at some other options. Magazines from SEMA, Valken, ENC, APS, G&G, and Blue Box all fit and fed fine, but the winner is definitely the APS for the best fitment, and Blue Box as the runner-up for the most positive click and smooth release. As usual though, try to bring in your rifle if you're picking up new mags to make sure that they fit properly. Let's take a look at that trigger. There's about two millimeters of travel until tension ramps up. The brake feels like a typical non-micro switched AEG trigger and it jumps a little bit at the brake. There is no over travel. Reset is long and all the way at the start of travel, but it's a nice click that you can feel. Trigger action is smooth and I have no complaints, but if you're coming from a micro switch, there's a little bit of an adjustment period. Onto the range now, with the shorter barrel A2, we saw about 430 FPS with 0.2. Consistency was respectable, with only one shot that deviated 6 FPS and most shots within 3. With a 7.4 volt 1000 milliamp battery, we were getting about 12.5 rounds per second. With the longer barrel A1, velocity should be a little bit higher, but instead clocks in at 420 feet per second, meaning they use a slightly weaker spring. Consistency is about the same with two anomalies this time. With the same 7.4 volt LiPo, it clocks in at 13 rounds per second, which makes sense with the weaker spring. By the way, with an 11.1, you can expect around 20 rounds per second. Shooting some targets now, first impressions are really good. These targets were almost too easy. At first, it shot slightly to the right, but a couple clicks on the irons and it was spot on. Even with that longer reset, double taps weren't too much of an issue, and this gun feels really good to shoot. Overall, accuracy does not disappoint, and the solid upper definitely seems to help stabilize that barrel a bit. It still has some room for upgrades, but you can definitely run this gun straight out of the box and expect solid consistency. And there you have it, this ASG CZ805 Bren. There's a lot going for this gun. It's really well built and is compatible with a lot of magazines on the market. But then there's the less quantifiable qualities like the aesthetics. I'm not gonna say this gun is ugly because I don't think it is, but for one, I'm not in love with how that stock looks and I definitely look into buffer tube mods. Not only is that mag release moved forwards, but the magazine is moved forwards as well in a mag well that looks a little bit too big for it. But more than anything, I think most Bren owners are just gonna get tired of hearing, what kind of scar is that? It's definitely a niche gun, so expect niche gun quirks. But if something a little different is what you're after, then the CZ Bren is a great rifle. As always, thanks so much for watching. Make sure you subscribe if you wanna support the channel, and we'll catch you on the next one.